Some Jews can be found in Africa, while others never left their homeland. We identified seven of the largest Jewish groups across the world who have lived in a variety of countries throughout history, and we are going to rank them based on their ancient Israelite ancestry. Now you might learn about a special 3,000-year-old people, and this mysterious group might be the most Jewish of them all. Our journey starts in Africa, quite an unexpected place for Jews. Yet Ethiopia is home to a people known as the Beta Israel, who have been isolated from other Jews for more than a thousand years. But are they really linked to the first Israelites from the Levant? Ethiopian Jews number around 170,000 people. Only a small minority remain in their ancestral homeland, as most of the population emigrated to the state of Israel. Now scientists found something unexpected when looking at their DNA. The Beta Israel form their own distinct cluster when compared with other Jews. However, they are similar to some Ethiopian ethnicities, more specifically the Semitic-speaking Tigrayans and Amharas. So how much are they related to ancient Levantine people? The Beta Israel likely descend from a few itinerant Jews. These founders converted the population and married local women, and as a result didn't leave much genetic trace in modern Ethiopian Jews. Now another Jewish group can be found not far from the Horn of Africa. Yemen was home to one of the oldest Jewish communities, and probably the largest who doesn't have any ties to Europe. Yemenite Jews have lived in southern Arabia for many centuries, but these people, also known as the Taimanim, almost all left for other lands. Yemenite Jewish history started before the first millennium, yet it was brought to an abrupt end with the founding of Israel, as the Taimanim emigrated en masse to the newly created state. And DNA studies may explain why their traditions are so unique. The Taimanim form their own separate group in the Jewish world, since their genetic profile does not overlap with non-Yemenites, which is similar to what can be observed among Ethiopians. Now they might still resemble other Jews more than the Beta Israel do, although there is some genetic proximity with ancient Israelites, as a result of shared Middle Eastern ancestry between both groups. It seems that Yemenite Jews are not different from their host population, suggesting that they descend from Arabs who converted to Judaism. What if I told you that Jews can be found in the world's most populous country? Actually, Indian Jews are split into several distinct groups, including some with a very long history in this nation, and they might have a bigger Jewish heritage than you expected. Cochin Jews are the oldest Jewish community in India, while the Bene Israel form the largest Jewish group of the country. Both have a predominantly indigenous maternal lineage, but the latter might be more genetically related to other Jews. The Bene Israel have a different paternal ancestry, since many of their men carry DNA that comes from the Middle East. This genetic signature links them directly to the Levant. So how much does this impact the total heritage of Indian Jews? Despite this paternal connection, Indian Jews remain mostly local. Their overall genetic makeup is similar to other South Asians, and the input linked to Iron Age Levantines is rather small. Now the following group is more tied to Israelites than most people think. The Ashkenazim make up by far the biggest Jewish diaspora, constituting around 70% of the world's Jewish population. This community first appeared as a distinct group during medieval times, and you will be shocked by the European country they share the most with. Ashkenazi Jews started with a small number of Levantine founders, who mixed with local populations early on in their history, before establishing themselves in Central and then Eastern Europe. But the main source of their European ancestry is found southwards. Around half of Ashkenazi heritage comes from Europe, with most of it being tied to the southern part of the continent, especially to Italy where they settled during the Roman era, making them particularly close to some Mediterranean people. Ashkenazi Jews have a moderate amount of Israelite DNA, which is explained by roughly half of their ancestry being Levantine. This makes them very similar to people from Malta or Sicily. Now they resemble a Jewish group who lived in another part of Europe. Sephardi and Ashkenazi Jews might have shared part of their history, since they descend from the same group of people who moved to Europe, but the Sephardim settled in the Iberian Peninsula, yet they were forced out of this region at the end of the 15th century. Most Sephardi Jews settled in North Africa after their expulsion, forming large communities in Morocco and Tunisia, while others moved to various parts of the Ottoman Empire. So where can we find the populations who are the most like them? Several other Jewish groups share similarities with the Sephardim. The Jews of Italy have a comparable genetic background. The same is true for the Romaniotes, who used to live in Greece, and together they form a distinct European Jewish cluster. Modern studies show that Sephardi Jews are close to the Ashkenazim, they carry a similar amount of ancient Israelite ancestry, but the European component is slightly lower in the Sephardim. That brings us to some Jewish populations who formed outside of Europe. 
Mizrahim is a relatively new subdivision in the Jewish world. This term was coined when the state of Israel was established, as a way to group the so-called Eastern Jews who didn't come from Europe, and they went on to form a major part of the Hebrew nation. Half of Jewish Israelis identify as Sephardi or Mizrahi, as there is some overlap between the two classifications, but the latter mostly refers to Middle Eastern and Central Asian Jews. Now the different cultures inside of this group are still very distinct. This classification includes diverse independent groupings, such as mountain Jews from the Caucasus or the Persian speaking speaking Bukharian Jews, and groups who lived closer to Israel and Syria or Iraq. So what does the genetic makeup of these people look like? Their Israelite heritage can range from moderate to high, and will vary from one community to another, with the rest of their ancestry coming from local Middle Easterners. Now let's look at a group that might be the most ancient of them all. Samaritans may be one of the world's most intriguing ethnic groups. They split from mainstream Judaism thousands of years ago and are therefore considered a separate religious group. But the chief rabbinate of Israel classifies them as ethnic Jews. Today, there are only about 900 Samaritans left who live in just two communities in Israel and Palestine. They have always stayed in their ancestral homeland close to Mount Gerizim. So this might explain why their DNA profile is so unique. Scientific studies show that Samaritans are a special group. They fall in the middle of the core Levantine genetic cluster. This makes them very close to Christians from Palestine or Lebanon. Now they might be the ones who have changed the least since the end of the Bronze Age. Samaritans are almost identical to the first Israelites, as this community has changed very little since biblical times. Their isolation helped preserve their genetic makeup over the centuries.